welcome back to my channel my name is Charlotte today I'm doing another monthly review uh, this month is obviously November or the month just gone it's November I'm aware that for the last few months I've kind of like I've missed a few months where I've doubled a few up um, so I want to try and get back on track so this month I'll be doing November and then next month I'll be doing kind of December slash 2017 which has been a big year for me so that's probably going to be a long video I actually have quite a lot to talk to you about this month like things that I bought stuff I've been loving things that have happened, the way I've been feeling. I've just got a random list so I'm going to get started. The first one being something we've watched, which is Justice League. We went to see this at the cinema Monday, so three days after it came out. I have mixed feelings about this. I really enjoyed it. I enjoy all of the DC films. My favourite, as I've mentioned before, has been Suicide Squad, which was panned, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I did also like Wonder Woman. I've liked all of them, as I've said. There was something about Justice League that didn't quite sit right with me. And Sam said to me it was probably what happened with the editing. Like, they completely had to change. They had to cut out a lot. They changed the whole storyline around in post-production. Um, they went back and refilmed bits. So it's probably that. But there's something that didn't quite sit right. Like, Ben Affleck is Batman. I... Before I'd seen him as Batman, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. I love Christian Bale, he is my Batman. And then I kind of ate my words a bit when I saw him in um, Batman v Superman and... Suicide Squad? Uh, Batman v Superman was kind of the one where he was like featured the most. I thought he was very good, but in this film I just... <laughs> I don't know whether it was Ben Affleck or whether it was how the character was written, but he just came across as very jaded, a bit useless to be honest, and I didn't... I didn't enjoy him as a character. I think The Flash was amazing. He was he was brilliant. He was funny. I just enjoyed I enjoyed watching him and so I'm really looking forward to the Flashpoint film. Uh, Aquaman again, I really enjoyed him and I'm looking forward to the Aquaman film that's coming out. I think that's coming out next year. It, other than that, kind of like Superman um I couldn't get over how his face looked. Like when he there was a bit at the beginning it's not a spoiler if I say, but there's a bit in the beginning that's like a video camera, like video of him. And I was like, where's Henry Cavill? And Sam was like, that is him. And I was like, no, it isn't. And I didn't believe that it was because his jaw, like he looked like he had a massive underbite. And you might have heard that they spent, Warner Brothers spent a lot of money uh, CGIing out his moustache. So it's probably that, but I found it a bit distracting. Overall, I did enjoy it. But I know that there was something, like, throughout the whole thing, there was something that wasn't quite sitting right with me. I, If you've seen it, let me know what you think and if you enjoyed it. The next thing is kind of a baby thing, or there's a few baby things. Um, as you may or may not know, I have started a new channel called Bean and Me, which I will link down below, which is something else I want to talk about this month. I started a new channel because I wanted to put all my pregnancy and baby-related stuff somewhere else. I wanted there to be a safe place that was away from people making, making shitty comments about my weight and the way I look and I just wanted it to be about my baby and about the pregnancy. So there is that. Um, thank you for everyone that subscribed already and watched my videos. There isn't many up there yet because I'm doing everything a lot slower at the moment. So running two YouTube channels, we're trying to upload content on both. It can be a bit tricky when you're feeling quite under the weather as I am due to being five months pregnant. That's the next thing that I'm going to talk about. We had the 20 week scan four days ago, five days ago. Everything is all healthy. The 20 week scan, if you didn't know, is kind of the one where they look at um, the organs, the heart. They took a real in-depth look at the baby to make sure that the baby is developing properly. And she is. I don't know if I've actually announced on this channel, but we're having a little girl. Uh, we found out about four weeks ago, but yeah, we're having a little girl. Something else I can tell you about. Um, so yeah, the 20 week scan, all good. She's a little bit small, but not off the chart. She's, they said she's measuring about like four days behind, which is nothing. And she's really growing at the moment. So I'm sure she's gonna kind of catch up or she might just be a little bit on the small side when she's born. Who knows? I will just say one more thing to do with the baby. I know that I do keep everything kind of separate on there, but this is about my month and the baby is obviously a part of my month. She started kicking like massively. And yesterday, for the first time, I felt her through my stomach. Like, I can feel her in my stomach, but I felt her with my hand. My hand was resting on my stomach because I could feel she was moving. And she went, Poof, and she kicked me. And it was the most incredible feeling. I can't tell you. Obviously, if you've been pregnant, then you know what it feels like. But I can't tell you what an amazing feeling it is knowing that that is the first time that me and my baby have kind of made contact, if that makes sense. Even though we weren't touching, but the fact that she you know, done something that was there and it was just, it was amazing. <laughs> I've been trying to catch one of her kicks like for Sam to feel, but so far it's not really happened, but I know that she's just kicking more and more every day. So it will happen. She has been a bit more active at night, but the last few days she just kind of throughout the day, she just wakes up and has periods of kicking and moving and squirming, which is really, really lovely. I've just, 
it's just head fucking beautiful. The next two things I'm going to talk about are products and they are face masks. There's two separate ones, well actually technically they're four, but there's um, uh, two products I suppose. The first one is the L'Oreal Multi-Masking Play Kit. I'm sure that that's supposed to say clay. Can you see that? It says play kit. I'm sure that's supposed to say clay kit. Anyway, what it is, is you get three mini samples of their new, they've got like a range out. Um, Multi-masking is where you kind of put, you can see there, like you can put, like you put like different products on different areas where you need different things. I've not been very good at kind of doing that. I've used the, the black and the green one together but then I've used the orange one separately um, because I like how it feels because it's like slightly exfoliating but there's a green purity mask, a black detox mask and a red glow mask and yeah I think it was like seven pounds I got it on offer and you get like three times ten millilitres which I'd say about five millilitres is a face like a full face if you kind of don't do it too too thick so you can get a fair few uses out of these obviously once you've used them they're open and they might dry out so you don't want to leave it too long but I really recommend these, they're really good fun. Uh, I've had kind of a few pregnancy breakouts and pretty much cleared up. I don't know whether this has played a part in it because I can't use my usual skincare products. I've just been having to use completely just boring stuff, which is, I, I love experimenting with skincare stuff. So something like this is really fun. The other product that I also used, um, I got when I ordered that as well, is the Neutrogena Visibly Clear Pore and Shine in Shower Mask. It looks like that. It's basically a mask that you use in the shower. So it's kind of like, like exfoliating, so you rub it in, you leave it on for a minute and then you wash it off. And my skin feels so clean and so soft after using it. It smells really nice. It smells of tangerine and lime, so it's like quite citrusy. Obviously with what it says, I suppose it's kind of used for like, it's for like oilier skin. I don't necessarily have like oily skin, but I just really like the way this feels, kind of as a face wash more than anything so again i'd really recommend that it was probably around four pounds so not expensive and that would last a long time and you only need to do it like twice a week so i'd recommend that if you have i have really big pores this is good the next thing on my list is christmas now as this video goes up it will be december i'm filming this the week before because i'm trying to be organized this is the first year like in as long as i can remember that i've actually been looking forward to christmas and i will million percent believe that it's a because of living in my own house and b because of the fact that I have a baby growing inside me and next year I will be kind of fully into the Christmas thing, making Christmas special for her because it'll be her first Christmas. The one thing that is kind of slightly harder is that this is, like I'm like broker than I have ever been. Paying for a baby is expensive and having a house is expensive. I'm pretty much living in my overdraft at the moment. It's financially, it's been really, really tough the last few months for kind of a variety of reasons. Uh, that I don't need to go into. So I've had to be kind of really sensible with Christmas presents this year. Um, I think I've only got a few more left to get. By the time this video goes up, we will be the Christmas tree will be up. I'm probably gonna vlog that weekend. Uh, that will be on my other channel, that will be on Bean On Me. The next thing is kind of a product as well, and it's a bit silly, but I've got a handbag. I haven't had a handbag for like a good couple of years. And it occurred to me that if I don't have something with pockets, I don't have anywhere to carry my phone and my keys. Kind of the two most important things that you know I always need with me because my phone has like my cards in and stuff. It's from New Look and it's just an over the body kind of messenger bag with several compartments. And I just it like occurred to me I was like when I go into labour I'm gonna have my big hospital bag but I'm gonna need somewhere to put like my phone and my keys and just like little stuff. So I got myself a handbag. I think it was about fifteen pounds from ASOS, but it's from New Look, like New Look on ASOS. I'm not somebody that like kind of likes expensive posh bags I like ones that are kind of are comfy for me that are kind of fit my style I don't like kind of the posh looking ones I really love hobo bags like I have a massive 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 bag that I use like as an overnight bag it's a blue suede and it's completely battered but it's it's really big it's got a massive strap that's my kind of bag I love those sort of bags but it's not practical if you if you're kind of on crutches and stuff and if you're if you're less abled the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is Dexa had her operation at the beginning of November she uh, she was spayed because we don't want puppies. I kind of weighed up the pros and cons of spaying her or waiting till if she's had till she's had a first season. Uh, there's kind of differing information all over the internet about what is best and the pros and cons. I spoke to my vet and what they tend to do is 
do the do puppies as early as is less invasive for them um it's a kind of small operation because everything's smaller and there's less risk of bleeding and all of this so i decided to get it done and also because i don't know how to look after a bitch on heat and i wanted to do the best thing for dexter i know that some people may disagree with this some people may agree with it but this is what i decided to do for that I thought was best for my dog. She was fine with the operation. However, her the bottom part of her scar hasn't quite healed properly. She's developed a little granuloma because she's such a little shit. She won't stay calm. Like the day of the operation, she was calm because she was like still sedated and all that. But other than that, she's just been running around and it was a night like while her stitches were in, trying to make keep her calm enough so that she didn't burst her stitches was just a nightmare. But also because she kept, keeps on like licking it. She had the cone on and then we took it off. She's got an inflatable cone um, because that's a lot comfier for her because the big cone was too big for her head so she just couldn't walk anywhere. She looked a bit like one of those, what are those? Oh, an aardvark. She looked like an aardvark um, or a demogorgon. So yeah, the bottom part of the, uh, the stitches haven't healed properly. Uh, she's all had her stitches out. Now that she's got her cone back on 24-7, apart from if she's like sleeping with us and like we, we can make sure she's not going for her stitches, not her stitches but her wound. Um, then it's fine but yeah she has she has it on and it's healing better but there's a little lump there and that lump will probably the swelling will go down but the lump will probably stay they've said this if it gets infected then she'll have to have it removed um basically they said she's had a little reaction to the stitches on the inside it only happens to a very tiny percentage of dogs dex has been unlucky probably because of all the running around and being naughty um, we have done our best, uh, but yeah, the vets have been brilliant. Like we've been back a few times for like post-op care. But yeah, she's she's doing great. The next thing is another product that I forgot to mention, and that is um, something that I bought from Aldi a few weeks ago, and it's an electric blanket. Oh my god, it's not an electric blanket like under the bed one. It's one that you, it's an electric throw, so it's heated. And this is it here. So it's like just red and furry, and then the heaty thing here is there, and. I've had electric blankets that you put under the bed before and they're great but they they kind of warm the bed up but they take a long time and also sometimes like if I'm cold then Sam might not be cold or vice versa so we don't want the whole bed getting hot if we don't need it. I got this and it's amazing it was only £30 and I love it it heats up like within about 15 minutes it's warm enough to warm you up so sometimes if I like have to get out of bed and it's kind of cold out of bed because I'm trying to keep the heating off because money. Um, I'll stick the electric blanket on so that when I get back into bed it's kind of warmer and I can just curl up in it and turn it off after a few minutes. It's warm me up. Uh, like as a blanket itself it feels really really lovely. It's like um, it's like that teddy bear fleece material. It's thick and yeah I really really love it and I'd recommend. I know Aldi kind of have like a changing stock but if you go in there and see it I highly recommend getting them I think the other colours were a bit shitty it was like a cream and a brown but I like the red because the bedroom's red it goes in here I think there's only one more thing to talk about now um, and that is it's kind of baby related kind of mental health related last Friday Sam and I had an appointment with the maternity psychiatrist well it's kind of more me but Sam came with me for the first part but it was for me just to offer me some support and to help me get over some of my fears to do with labour that's what it was supposed to be that's not how it turned out lots of very hurtful things were said in the appointment very unnecessary things about my ability to care for my baby and uh, i've had a problem with like i've i've never found a psychiatrist they, that i get on with they're they're dicks they're absolute dicks they assume things this guy knew what he wanted to say when i first went in he was asking me questions he was making me feel guilty for things that I didn't have any control over like I was admitted to hospital a few years ago to a neurological rehab unit and he was like well why you why were you admitted there that's for people that have serious head injuries and I was like that's where my doctor sent me I have a neurological condition so that's where they felt it was the best place for me to try and walk again I can't really go into it too much because it isn't just about me this affects me and Sam and our families stuff was said and stuff was put in motion that was has meant that we had the most horrific weekend luckily by monday we'd sorted it out now that it is sorted out we are filing a formal complaint against this psychiatrist because what he did what he said was damaging it was dangerous and it was disgusting <laughs> um i'm making light of it now but i when i say that we had a horrific weekend i really mean we have been to hell and back because of what happened in this appointment um 
I know I'm being quite mystic about it, but I, I can't talk about it any more than I am now. All I can say is shit happened and it was shit. It was absolute bullshit. This man is, in my opinion, not fit to practice. I'm sure he's good at some of the things that he does, but he doesn't know that if, if he'd said the things that he said to me, to the me of a few years ago, I probably would have gone out and tried to kill myself because it, uh, just understand, I can't say anymore, just understand that it was horrific. And we're doing our best to kind of, we've done our best to get through with it, to get through it. Luckily our families have been so supportive, both my family and Sam's family, and they all agree how ridiculous this man is. And it was actually my parents that said, we're making a formal complaint. And I was like, I'm okay with that because what he did, he should be held accountable he should be held accountable for his actions, so yeah. I'm gonna stop talking now because I've been talking for a very long time and I'm gonna go and get Dexter and have a cuddle with her before I head out. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to my new channel, Bean and Me, if you're interested in pregnancy and baby stuff. Share them around if you want to and I will see you again soon. Bye.